Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for lifespan development, and in it we're looking at the second quiz for Chapter 5, which is on middle childhood. The first question on this quiz was, which of the following would be used to help children with ADHD concentrate? That is, what would help them concentrate? Uh, a, a, a depressant, B, an antipsychotic medication, C, a vitamin supplement, or D, a stimulant? Well, one of the great ironies of uh, psychopharmaceuticals is that if a person has ADHD, actually it's a stimulant that helps them the most. Uh, Ritalin, for instance, the most common, is a stimulant. And there are a number of uh, adults with ADHD who have actually self-medicated with the use of cocaine. And it's kind of amazing, but it actually does help them calm down, uh, unlike this guy right here who has apparently not taken his meds. Okay. Um, question number two, which of the following are the three elements in information processing? And the choices are learning, remembering, and behaving, learning, remembering, and problem solving, learning, problem solving, and behaving, or remembering, problem solving, and behaving. It's a very confusing list. The answer is B, learning, remembering, and problem solving. Now, I've got this picture here that talks about learning and remembering, doesn't talk about problem solving, but we'll come back to this one in just a minute. Question number three is, Adele is at a party and is meeting new people. As she's introduced to each person, she tries to think of something to associate their names with so she can remember them. What is Adele doing? And you can say she's encoding information, rehearsing the information, retrieving the information, or repeating the information. Well, in this particular case, because she's trying to learn it, we're going to call it encoding. That means getting the information in. And we look at this same chart, you'll actually see that there's the process of rehearsal that helps through the encoding and gets things into long-term memory. In fact, there we are trying to remember some names right there. Okay, question number four. Which of the following theorists proposed a theory uh, designed around a common underlying factor of intelligence called G? Choices are Spearman, Thurstone, Sternberg, and Weschler. These actually are all people who are well known for their work in intelligence testing. But the person we're looking for right here is Spearman. And uh, here's a picture of the man himself. And here's a picture of his theory, which talked about four specific aspects of intelligence, in which he called mechanical, logical, arithmetical, and spatial. But that they shared a major component right there in the middle with a tiny, tiny little letter there, G, for general intelligence. Okay, question number five. Which of the following is thought to be is thought to cause the intellectual deficiencies in Down syndrome? The choices are uh, fetal catenuria, PKU, um, brain damage in the womb, impoverished home environment, or chromosomal abnormalities. Well, you know, all of these things are problems, but the one associated with Down syndrome is going to be chromosomal abnormalities, uh, specifically. If you look at the uh, chromosomes here, we got a little red box around the 21st set. It's supposed to be a pair. Uh, all the rest of them are pairs. And this is why uh, another name for Down syndrome is trisomy 21, or three chromosomes on the third um, set. Question number six. Ed is working on a logical puzzle and decides to brainstorm ideas rather than taking a method um, methodical approach. What type of thinking is Ed using? Choices are deductive reasoning, inductive reasoning, convergent thinking, or divergent thinking. Well, he's brainstorming. He's not trying to be methodical. He's going all over the place. He is engaging in divergent thinking. And here's our nice little illustration. Um, it's just all sorts of things going every which way, um, trying to come up with as many variations as possible. Okay, number seven. Which of the following will likely have the greatest chance of having similar IQ scores? And it's going to be siblings reared together, biological parent and child living together, adoptive siblings reared together, or identical twins reared together. Well, of those, uh, what you're going to be looking for is the people who have both the uh, share the most in terms of genetics and share environment. And that's going to be the identical twins who have the same genetics and reared in the same environment, so they'll have very similar environments, usually. And again, this is the chart that we looked at before, which showed uh, sort of the similarities you would expect with a monozygotic uh, over on the left, and again, descending levels of relationships to the right. Question number eight, which of the following is characteristic of conduct disorder? 
Uh, is it the inability to pay attention, the withdrawal from social activity, the external attribution, or the fear of separation? Well, for conduct disorder, one of the distinguishing characteristics is the withdrawal from social activity. And here's our picture from the book. Young guy, he's off smoking and probably standing behind the building by himself. Um, but that is, uh, the withdrawal is a major part of conduct disorder. Question number nine. Someone who wishes to be a person of the opposite gender is called a lesbian, a homosexual, a bisexual, or a transsexual. Well, uh, to be elementary, we're actually talking about somebody who's transsexual, changing from one to another. And um, interesting chart here of a particular person who went through the operation, who went through the entire procedure from uh, male to female. And I have to admit, um, it's a pre pretty dramatic change and actually looks a lot better as a, as a woman. Um, but this is with uh, both surgery and with hormones, and uh, it can make a big difference. Finally, question number 10. What did Kohlberg emphasize as particularly important with regard to moral development? The choices are to present a moral map primarily through parenting, to reinforce proper moral behavior through the lens of society, to view the moral world from the perspective of another person, or to provide the rules to morality through cultural norms. Well, in Kohlberg's uh, view, the best thing to do, what he emphasized, was to view the moral world from the perspective of another person. And you see that if you go back to this very complicated table that up at the top, it's very selfish stuff. Personally avoid punishment, personally get a reward. Uh, to ones that are sort of social, but you still are looking out for yourself, to the ones that are very externally oriented at the bottom, the post-conventional. Anyhow, that is it for the second quiz of Chapter 5 on Middle Childhood in Lifespan Development. Thanks for watching.